Hi developers and welcome to Serverless Migration Station where we show you one serverless compute modernization technique. I'm Wesley from Google joined by Martin and our friend Porter here to discuss how and when you would move an App Engine app to Cloud Functions. That sounds great. Uh, but what I want to know is why we'd want to migrate an App Engine app to Cloud Functions. Very fair of you to ask, because you want to know whether it's worth doing. One key reason is that you didn't have much code to begin with, but App Engine was all we had available. Other reasons include less configuration, more robust local development experience, and the ability to do event-based background processing. Wow, I didn't even know you could do this with Cloud Functions. Uh, but isn't App Engine really different from Cloud Functions? Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? I mean, App Engine is great for full stack web apps or mobile backends, while Cloud Functions sounds like it's for event driven microservices or one off utility functions, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, Wes. Uh, so I suppose answering when you'd move from App Engine to Cloud Functions is the first order of business before discussing how to do it. Absolutely. Anytime you're considering switching products, you don't do it lightly. I already mentioned some of the benefits you get with Cloud Functions, but for something more specific, I'd say we take a quick step back. There was a time not too long ago when App Engine was the only serverless platform available, so you'd use it for everything, including small, single functionality apps, if you call them that. Short apps with not much code are perfect for this migration. Cloud Functions has much less overhead, meaning you can drop app.yaml and other configuration files, keeping just your app files along with third-party package dependencies. Oh, and one other thing, Cloud Functions does not support Python 2, so this is a great chance to upgrade to Python 3. Ah, that makes sense. A small app like that is really just a single microservice, uh, perfect for Cloud Functions. Cool. So what was the other situation for considering moving from App Engine to Cloud Functions? Well, you said the magic word, Martin, microservice. In this other scenario, you have a huge monolithic app made up of mostly independent routes, which could be almost a collection of API endpoints. Oh, uh, so you mean I can split out my user authentication code and admin-only utilities to be separate functions away from the main app? That's right, especially if you have different developers doing the auth code, the database code, the admin code, and so on. Your dev team won't be stepping on each other's shoes. Breaking up that app into multiple independent microservices like what you suggested is a prime candidate to move to Cloud Functions. Better yet, if you make them plug and play, you can reuse those pieces for other apps, saving time and improve maintainability. It's a valuable refactor in many respects. Sounds good. Uh, but what if my monolithic application is huge and I have a ton of microservices? Uh, would that still be a good use case for Cloud Functions? It's a good question, Martin. The general rule of thumb for using Cloud Functions is when you have a few or a handful of microservices. If you've got many more than that, or there are even dependencies between them, you may want to consider keeping it running as is on App Engine for now, or consider moving to Cloud Run, especially if your team has added containerization as part of your software development workflow. Makes sense. Uh, and if that's the case, we've already made some videos showing users how to migrate from App Engine to Cloud Run, both with and without Docker, right? That's right. And both of those videos also come with code labs, so you get that hands-on experience. The rest of this video will be for those considering Cloud Functions instead. Sounds good. Uh, can you tell us more about the app we're migrating to Cloud Functions? Yeah, the Cloud NDB sample app from Module 2 is a great example for us to use because it doesn't rely on any App Engine bundled services. We moved it from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB back in Module 2. And since Cloud Functions only supports Python 3, we're going to start with the Module 2B folder and migrate that app to Cloud Functions. I see. Uh, can you point me to the repo as well as the code lab uh, to remind me what we did back in module two? Sure thing. Here are the links to both the starting repo as well as the code lab to remind you of how we got there from module one. If you did module two and ported it to Python 3, start with your version. But if you don't have it, clone the repo or download the zip file and grab it from the module 2B folder. Got it. Now I understand that I should use Cloud Functions when I have smaller bits of code, like utility function or a microservice, uh, rather than a full app. Is there anything else to know when getting ready to migrate? Yeah, well, think about this. If you don't have a full app, you won't need a full web framework either, right? Yes, you still have to get, service, and respond to requests, but that's it. You can just write code and not have to think about stacks or frameworks with that. So let's go to the computer and move this to Cloud Functions now. You know the pattern by now, right? Deploy that app one more time to App Engine to ensure it works. This way, there's no guessing if you run into issues after migrating. 
From your Module 2B, run gcloud app deploy and confirm that your app adds a new visit and displays the 10 most recent visits, just like it's always done. OK, just like when we migrated from App Engine to Cloud Run, it's a whole new platform, so make an entire copy of your Module 2B folder. Now, let's start cleaning house. Delete app.yaml and App Engine artifact. The only config file needed is the package requirements file requirements.txt. Neither that nor the HTML index file in templates require editing. All of the work is in the main application file. And when I say work, it sounds like a lot, but it's really just removing or tweaking things. As mentioned earlier, we don't need a web framework, so strip out almost everything from Flask. The app still renders a template of visits, so we'll do need to keep that. Cloud Functions will give us a Flask request object when the Cloud Functions is called, so we don't need to ask the framework for it. We removed importing Flask, so there's no need to instantiate it. No, there's no longer an app object. If your app is dependent on it, you may be better off staying with App Engine or containerizing it for Cloud Run. No app means we should remove the route as well. While root is an adequate name for the root function of an app, this app is really just a single function, visit me. Since it's now a function, let's give it an appropriate function name, visit me. Cloud Functions will call it directly with that name, plus it's more descriptive. And boom, that's it. Your App Engine app is now a Cloud Function. Instead of gcloud app deploy, it's gcloud functions deploy. But because Cloud Functions doesn't have a config file like app.yaml, you need to specify other aspects like which runtime, the trigger type, whether to allow unauthenticated traffic, and possibly what region. Now, as we wrap up, let's chat about some things that Cloud Functions can do that App Engine can't. One key feature is that while you can develop Cloud Functions on the command line like App Engine, you can also do everything in the browser, create functions, code them, deploy them, and test them all from the Cloud Console. Pretty cool, right, Martin? Wow, that is really cool. Uh, sometimes I'm on the road and really only have browser access. It's good to know that I'll be able to make fixes from my hotel room if needed. I think there is another thing Cloud Functions can do that App Engine can't, right? Yeah, and perhaps this is a product differentiator. We know App Engine apps are HTTP triggered. Well, Cloud Functions supports that, but now we can execute our function in the background as part of an event-driven process. Cloud Functions can be triggered if someone uploads a file to Cloud Storage, a new message comes into Cloud PubSub, someone logs into Firebase, and so on. Right. It's cool that event-driven means you can execute different Cloud Functions as part of one single workflow. Uh, now, you mentioned we can develop, deploy, and test in the browser. But I'm really an old-school developer. Uh, what if I want to do everything here on my local laptop? Yeah, the Cloud Functions team has you covered here, too. For local development and testing, check out the Functions Framework, a set of open source libraries letting you create lightweight functions that run in many different environments, including Cloud Functions, locally on your laptop like you wanted, Cloud Run, or other Knative-based environments. Check it out with the links down below. All right. Cloud Functions is quite the versatile product. I'll definitely consider it for its target use cases. And now, are there any other migrations that App Engine developers should consider? Yeah, most of the videos in this migration series involves migrating off of the original App Engine bundle services, like switching away from App Engine NDB to either Cloud NDB or Cloud Data Store, and those are covered in modules two and three. Those with App Engine push queues can migrate those to Cloud Tasks. This is covered in modules seven, eight, and nine. Modules 12 and 13 cover moving off of App Engine Memcache to Cloud Memory Store and Redis. And we already discussed containerizing App Engine apps for Cloud Run with or without Docker, and those are featured in modules four and five. Wow, uh, so many modules, Wes. I'm not supposed to do each module one after another, right? That's right, and more of them are coming. Developers should look at whichever modules make the most sense for their apps and use cases. We're here whenever you need us. Thanks for writing with us on Porter for all of these different migration journeys. This is Wesley from Google Cloud on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we hope to see you at the next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Mm -hmm.